Today I'm going to show you how you can scrape any website using init-in for completely free. Now you can see this workflow here is very, very simple and this is not going to be a long video at all. So to get started doing this, I'm just going to create a new workflow in the top right of my init-in account. And then the first step, I'm just going to trigger manually. Uh, depending on the workflow that you're actually using this inside of, you'll have it set up differently. but. Uh, we're going to add a plus here and to actually do this we're going to add an http request node like this now what we need to do is we're going to change this to a post request i'll show you why in just a second now what we're going to do after this is we're going to open up a new tab and go to a website called firecrawl um, i'm just going to look up firecrawl show you, show you what it looks like so it's firecall.dev. It's going to open up their page here. And you'll want to create an account. This is entirely free. You can click the dashboard here at the top right. So inside of our firecrawl account here, we get access to our API key, which we will need in just a minute. What I'm actually going to do is open up their documentation. So I'm going to do that in a new tab here. And then you can see their documentation here. So you can kind of explore this depending on what you actually want to do. You can scrape, crawl different websites as well. Uh, basically the difference between crawling sites and scraping sites, crawling goes on different layers of websites and scraping just gets the information off of a single web page. So if you pass in the URL for a page, so if I just copied this and pasted it in to scrape that site, it's going to uh, basically find and give me back all of this information here on the page. Whereas crawling is going to go through each individual link so it might click on this and go to this page and then it might scroll down and click on the next link etc. So I'm going to show you how to scrape. You can set this up for crawling as well just by going through their documentation here. Uh, so if we go back to firecrawl we're going to need that API key. So I'm going to copy that API key and go back to Inidin. And we are also going to need the URL. The URL is going to be, let me copy it from my previous example. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And then we have API dot firecrawl dot dev. That's their normal URL. And then API in the front. And then we have uh, version one for forward slash version one forward slash scrape. So you can just copy what I have on the screen here for the URL. And then we need to actually add a header. So we're going to click send headers. And then the name of the header is going to be authorization. And then the value is going to be bearer, the word bearer, uh, just like this and then a space, and then we're going to paste in that API key that we got. So bear, and then I'm going to copy that API key, paste that in there. Then we are also going to send a body. Now the, uh, the body type is going to be JSON, so we can leave that. And then the specific body, we're going to select use JSON. Now this allows us to enter different things inside of the body that we are sending, such as the URL that we actually want scraped. So what we're going to type in here is we're going to do two curly brackets, just like this. You want them on the same layer or same like indention. So you can see those are at the farthest left they can be. And then inside of these curly brackets, we can actually add the body that we want sent. So to do this, we're going to do uh, quotations and then type URL, quotations again, and then we're going to colon, and then we're going to just add some empty quotations there. This is going to be where you're going to paste the URL that you actually want scraped. Now you can enter a variable here, but it does need to be inside of these quotations, which is a string inside of uh, for this URL here. So whatever URL you want to scrape, you're going to paste that in here. 
So I'll do these uh, house listings, for example. So I'll copy that URL and I'll paste that in there in just a second. Now we're going to type a comma and then we're going to hit enter and go down a layer. You can see that it's still indented and then we're going to do again quotations and type formats. Quotes again, so you can see it turns blue. Again, we're going to type a colon and then we're going to do inside of these brackets, we're going to type markdown just like this. So what this means is we're getting the response back in markdown, which is just how the, it's going to be formatted for us. So it's going to look like this. And then what you can do is just paste the URL inside of this URL section. So you're going to make sure it's inside of those quotes. This happens to be quite a long URL, but once we've done that, you can just like test up here. Now you can see we get that output filled in for us. You can see it's successful. And then you get the data here of that entire page, the search results, and it should end somewhere. It's a lot of results here. And then there's also some other data in here as well. So the author, Title and title, image, uh, language, other things like that. You can kind of skim through the rest of that. But that is how you scrape different websites inside of Inidin using Firecrawl for completely free. And yeah, pretty simple. Uh, well, pretty quick video, but just wanted to get on here and show you how to scrape websites can be very helpful. Whether you're scraping a client's website to get information to use inside of a database. Uh, the certain websites may not have APIs, so you can do what I did and monitor uh, maybe it's real estate listings, things like that. So if you're, you find a site that doesn't have an API, you can scrape that as well, things like that. But yeah, if you have any questions, drop in the comments below. And if you did get anything from this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, that's a lot for you today. Have a good one.